this tutorial we're going to create some genoma items and define their orientation once the rig is created in layout. Let's start creating a skeleton in the top view. I'm going to use control because I want it to be perfectly aligned to the Z axis. Let's hit the spacebar and we have our skeleton ready to be transformed into a genoma item. Now in polygon mode we can select the skeleton and the use set default tags to transform this skeleton into a genoma item. You can see the shape has changed now and we can start to add additional information to this item which we may define a super skeleton. So let's save this preset. This is our genoma genoma to test. Okay. And let's send this genoma item to layout. If we now use create rig, we can see we have a master automatically created and a bond. Let's take a look at the orientation on this bond. You can see the pitch, well, the bank, it's aligned as a standard bond. When, when a standard bond is created in layout, this is ex the, the exact orientation you get. But we didn't define any orientation for this bond. So let's see why we have this result in layout. Let's go back to Modeler and let's take a look at the orientation of this super skeleton. To do this, we can select uh, Edit Skeleton, and there you can see this line. This line is defining the orientation of the bank. You remember the little arrow uh, that was on the on the bank axis, and well, that's about the same thing. That means that if we rotate this, yeah, this way, and then we hit the bar, save this item again, and switch to layout again. I'm going to update rig, and now you can see that orientation of the bank orientation is exactly the one we have defined in Modeler. So this is uh, the first way we have to to decide the alignment, to set the alignment of a genoma item. We can move the item and use the mirror tool to duplicate it and we can notice how the orientation has been mirrored as well. This w wasn't happening in the previous versions of Lightway, so this is an important fix, especially if you're using skeletons in, in your rigs. If we save and send this preset to layout and try to create rig, we're going to get an error. This is happening because in Modeler, both bonds are sharing the same name, which is not good in a genoma to preset you need different unique names for each item so let's rename the items bond 01 is okay and we need to rename the second item as bond 02 so now we can save again switch to layout clear the scene back in Modeler, send object to layout and create a rig. Now, let's take a look at the orientation of those two bonds. As you can see, it's exactly what we were expecting. So we have a mirrored copy of the orientation. We have two other ways to define the bank orientation of a genome item. First, we can use a pull item exactly the way we did in layout. I'm going to use 
this item here as a pole item for this one. So let's move it here and with this item selected let's open the properties. So first I'm going to set uh, as pole item bound 02. We also need to set the bank controller to align to pole. Let's save the object, switch to layout, and let's update the rig. So now you can see that the orientation, the bank orientation of this item, is pointing at this other item. And if we move this item, we of course are changing the bank orientation in real time. So we just have seen how to set the pole item in Genoma 2. You can see how this item has been automatically rotated and rested. If we reset the position of this bond from modify, reset, reset translation, we can see that the orientation here is set to 0, 0, 0, which means a record before rotation operation has been performed on the item. But what if we want to use this same method to define the pole orientation without having this connection live in the setup? Let's do something different. Let's try to control the bank orientation of multiple items without uh, assigning a pole vector because again we don't always want to do that uh, when we assign a pole vector for sure we want the bank uh, to be aligned in the initial uh, setup pose but you know if uh, we just want to define the orientation of the bank uh, without having uh, that orientation connected to to a pole well we can do that as well so let's create some Skelligans. Let's select them and make them genome items. Since all the bonds have been created in a single session, we don't need to rename them because if we take a look at the Skelligan tree, we can see all the genome items have different names. I'm going to add another Skelligan here. Let's set default tags for it and let's rename it in a very particular way. I'm going to use at here and a liner. This name can be anything we want. What is important is this hat symbol here. So let's select all the bonds but the liner and let's use the set pole option. I'm going to assign at a liner as a pole item. I will also use set controller and set the bank controller to align to pole. So all those items now, if we check from the genoma properties, have the hat aligner item set as a pole vector. So let's save this new preset with a different name. Let's go back to layout, let's clear the scene, back to modeler, and let's send this object to layout. Create rig, and as you can see, if we select all those bonds and make the rotation axis visible, we can see the bank is pointing to this item. I can move uh, this item around or even delete it from the scene and have the bank not changing. What happens if I move this item on the side. 
like this. Let's save it. Back to layout. And with the object selected, let's update the rig. So now the alignment of all those bonds is pointing at the new position of the aligner. So we have set a polydon in modeler, but we have no polydon set in layout. Every time we assign an item as a pole vector which has the, the hat symbol before its name, well, that's a very special case for Genoma 2. The pole vector information in this case is used only to uh, orient the bank of the selected item. And then the at item is not used anymore as a pole vector item. So be sure to never use the at symbol for the name of an item that you want to use as a real pole vector that you are going to use for animation. But if, like in this case, you're using it just to align the bank of some items, well, you probably may want to delete it as soon as the rigging process is completed. To do this, all we have to do is to select the item we want to delete at the end of the process, open the Genoma Properties panel, and from the Scripts tab, under Custom, write Delete Me. So now we can save the preset. Go back to Layout, select the object, update the rig. And we see the, the rig has been updated and the liner item has been deleted. Of course, its effect is still there, so all the item rotations are correctly aligned. In this video we've described some of the advanced features you can find in Genoma 2. Stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.